This is section 311. We're going to go into undoing an equation. So in this lesson, we're going to understand what it means to undo an equation, verify if two equations are inverses of each other, and how to find the inverse of an equation. In the later lessons, you're going to see why this idea of undoing an equation is so important. Now in this specific lesson, we're going to focus on this idea of what it means to undo an equation. So let's do a quick little exercise. I have a number that I'm thinking of. When you add 5 to my number, then multiply the result by 4, you get 40. What is my number? Now you can go ahead and pause the video and think of a few ways to figure it out, but let's examine what I did. So I took that number and I added 5 to it. So here's my number, and I'm adding 5 to it. Then I take all of that and I multiply it by 4, and I get 40. Well, what is my number? So this idea of undoing is you need to go through and undo this process. So we start with 40, so right? Because this is where I ended with, so I start with 40, and we're going backwards. So if I go backwards, instead of multiplying the result by 4, I'm going to divide by it because I'm undoing it. So here's my 40, and I divide by 4. Now I have 10. Now we keep going backwards. Now I said I added. Well, instead of adding the number, I'm now going to subtract it. So 10 minus 5, I get 5. So that's my number. This 5 is the x that I originally started with. What I did here is that process of undoing. So we can represent this process of creating and undoing as functions using this previous example. I could take this function. I said I had a number. I added 5 to it, and I multiplied it by 4. I can actually express it as an undo equation, as weird as that sounds. I took whatever my number is, I divided it by 4, and then I subtracted 5 to it. We call this function, and it has this special notation where it has this negative 1 as the exponent, we call this function an inverse. And that is a big buzzword here. It is an inverse. Now, this f to the negative 1, we don't read that as f to the negative 1, right? I know it looks like that. I'm using that language because that's what we're thinking. It's f inverse. That's how we say it. Do not misinterpret that negative 1. It's not a negative exponent. It doesn't mean we have to flip it. F, the way we would say this is f inverse of x. Now there's a special relationship here when it comes to inverse functions. Note that this is gold. That if we did a composition of the two functions, they will completely undo each other and you're left with x. So let's take a look at what this means. It just means that if you plug the equation into the other equation, they're going to undo each other and you just get x. So if I were to take that equation and I were to plug it in for x into that, Notice I just replaced that with x. Now if it simplifies, the 6s cancel out, and then the 3s cancel out, I'm just left with x. And I could do the reverse. I could then take my g function and plug it into my f function. I'm plugging it in for x there. 3 times that function, the 3s cancel out, and then the 6s cancel out, and so I'm left with x. So we know their function, their inverses of each other if they undo each other. Now, how do we find the inverse? There is a simple process here. The first thing is we switch the x and y. And then you solve for y. So in this instance, I switch the x and y. Remember this idea of f of x, that's the same thing as y. So we switch the x and y. Then I just need to get y by itself. So add 5 to both sides, divide both sides by 2. There's my inverse. Now, if it's a function, I can use this special notation, f inverse of x. And so that's my answer. Let's look at one more here. So the first thing we do is we switch the x and y. Then I just have to get y by itself. Subtract 3 on both sides, divide both sides by 2, cube root both sides, and then I have my answer. Now if this is a function, which it is, 
I can use that special notation. So what did we learn today? We talked about inverses and how to undo a function. Now what the undoing of a function means is that all of the values around that function disappear and we're left with x. The inverse function, we use this notation. And the inverse function undoes the function. And how do we find the inverse? You switch the x and y, and then you get y by itself, or you solve for y. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.